want to find the arc length of y equals one half e to the x plus e to the negative x for x values on the interval from zero to two. So how are we going to do that? What's our strategy going to be there? Well, we want to remind ourselves of how the arc length process works. The graph looks something like this. So let's just imagine that we're partitioning it, breaking it up into many different pieces and finding the arc length of each individual piece. So this is what I usually do, right? Just do something like this. And imagine these get smaller and smaller. So this you could think of as the change in X. This you could think of as the change in Y. And this third piece, it's bended here, but if it were straight, and if you partition fine enough, eventually it will be straight. That'll be the change in S. So knowing that then we have Pythagoras, which would tell us that the change in S squared is the change in X squared plus the change in Y squared. Again, if it's small enough, it's virtually linear. It's one of our fundamental concepts we keep using in calculus. Well, I guess that's change in S. I skipped a step there. So change in S is the square root of change in X squared plus change in Y squared. And then we're gonna go ahead and do what? Divide by change in X. So we'll say change in X squared plus change in Y squared divided by change in X multiplied by change in X. So we get that. But then dividing by change in X squared is the same thing as dividing by change in X as long as change in X is positive. So I get change in S is the square root, change in X squared over change in X squared, plus change in Y squared over change in X squared, which would be the same thing as change in Y over change in X squared, change in X. So I get change in S, is the integral of one plus change in y over change in x squared. That's just for one of them, but I have to add them all up. So the sum of all the changes in s is the sum of all of these, one plus change in y over change in x squared. And you know how we're gonna do, we're gonna shrink delta x to zero. So the total s, the total change in s will be the integral as we go from a to b, as x goes from a to b of what? Of the square root. As delta x goes to zero, delta y over delta x becomes dy over dx squared dx. So here we are at this point, which is our formula for arc length. And we are interested in x going from zero to two for that function y equals one half e to the x plus e to the negative x. Let's visualize this quickly, taking a look at Desmos to see what we're measuring. We're measuring the arc length from here to here. Now I have the endpoints there, okay? From zero, one to uh, three point, to two, three point seven six two approximately. So if I'd actually draw that line segment in, we could figure out how long it is as we go from zero to two. So our purple line is a straight line distance. Our red line distance is a little bit bigger, but we see our change in Y, right? From what? From uh, one to 3.2762, our, our change in Y is 2.762. Our change in X is from zero to two, our change in X is two approximately. So if we're looking to make an approximation, our total S should be approximately the square root of change in X squared plus change in Y squared. So S should be approximately the square root of 2.762 squared plus two squared. What does that give me? Let's see what we get. Square root of 2.762 squared plus two squared, I get about 3.41. That's if it's a straight line distance. So one more time, let's look at the graph. The purple line is straight line distance. That's about 3.41. So the straight will be a little bit more, I don't know, 3.5, 3.6, whatever it'll be. So that's a way to kind of check our work as we go along. All right. So what do we have? 
we have y equals one half e to the x plus e to the negative x. And we're interested on the interval from where to where on the interval from zero to two. And we at least uh, developed our rule that S will be the integral from zero to two because X is ranging from zero to two of the square root of one plus dy dx squared dx. We ready? Okay, so what is dy dx? Y is one half e to the x plus e to the negative x. The derivative with respect to x of y is the derivative with respect to x of one half e to the x plus e to the negative x. So dy dx, pull the one half out in front, one half the derivative of e to the x plus e to the negative x. So dy dx is one half. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x plus the derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. Okay. But you'll see our formula requires dy dx squared. We need dy dx squared if we're going to continue. So dy dx squared is this whole thing squared is one half e to the x minus e to the negative x squared. One half squared is a quarter. So what is e to the x minus e to the negative x times e to the x minus e to the negative x? This is what I usually teach my algebra students. I make them draw a box because we're, we're squaring. So I have e to the x minus e to the negative x multiplied by e to the x minus e to the negative x. e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x. Negative e to the negative x times e to the x is negative e to the 0, which is negative 1. Similar thing here, negative 1. And then we have negative e to the x times negative e to the x, which is positive e to the negative x, e to the negative x, e to the negative 2x. So what this piece becomes, this part portion just becomes e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the negative 2x. So that is my dy dx squared. So we have 1 quarter times what I just wrote which was e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the negative 2x. What does that equal? Let's multiply the 1 quarter in. So e to the 2x over 4 minus 2 fourths, also known as minus 1 half, plus e to the negative 2x over 4. And that whole thing is dy dx squared. So what do we need to do next? Plug that in, plug this in to this formula. So let's do it. So S is integral from zero to two square root one plus dy dx squared one plus all of that. So again, S is the integral from zero to two square root. 1 plus dy dx squared dx. S is integral from 0 to 2 square root of 1 plus what I got on the previous page, e to the 2x over 4 minus 1 half plus e to the negative 2x over 4 dx. Now, one subtract a half is going to be to add a half. And this is where the magic happens. Zero to two. One minus a half is one half, okay? Then what do we have? Then we have plus e to the two x over four. Then we have plus e to the negative two x over four. 
and a dx. I want to get a common denominator here. So let's make everything have a denominator of four. Integral from zero to two. Two fourths plus e to the two x over four plus e to the negative two x over four dx. Okay. And we continue to say s is the integral from zero to two. Upstairs, e to the two x plus two plus e to the negative two x all over four. Now, this may not be obvious, but that thing on top can indeed be factored. How? How can that thing be factored? Well, what it is, S is the integral from zero to two. Downstairs, fine, it's just square root of four, which is just two, no worries. Upstairs, I have square root of that big nasty thing. What is that? That is e to the x plus e to the negative x squared. Notice e to the x times e to the x, e to the two x twice, e to the x times e to the negative x. That's twice e to the zero, which is just two, plus e to the negative x times e to the negative x, e to the negative two x. So you've got to recognize that fact. Now e to the x is always positive, e to the negative x is always positive. So I don't need to worry about absolute values. And I get S is the integral from zero to two of the square root of that is just going to be e to the x plus e to the negative x over two dx, which requires two integrals. So S is the integral from zero to two of e to the x over two dx plus the integral from zero to two of e to the negative x over two dx. Where does that send me? Fine. Pull out the one halves, one half integral from zero to two of e to the x dx plus one half integral zero to two. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. So I get s is one half e to the x evaluated as x goes from zero to two plus one half. The antiderivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. As x ranges from zero to two. And we continue. Let's just clean up that minus sign stuff so it doesn't confuse us. S is one half e to the x. As x ranges from zero to two minus one half e to the negative x as x ranges from zero to two. Uh, I might actually combine these. I feel like doing it this way instead, change my mind. One half e to the x minus one half e to the negative x, just do it this way. X goes from zero to two rather than substituting twice. Okay, plugging in two, what do I get? Plugging in two, one half, e to the second minus one half e to the negative second minus plugging in zero, one half e to the zero minus one half e to the negative zero, which is just e to the zero. So that whole thing just goes away. And my answer is going to be this again, one half e squared minus one over two e squared. What is the decimal approximation of this? Let's take a look. What do we get? And we hoped our answer was a little bit more than 3.41. Let's see if that's the case. One half times e squared minus one over two e squared. And the result that I get is 3.62 or 3.63, approximately 3.63. So I feel pretty good about that. I had my approximation from looking at it and uh, I was able to go ahead and evaluate it there. So again, these integrals for these problems can get tricky. This one wasn't as bad as some of them can be.